So, here's another one that you probably, this thing's going to say powering off here in a second, all that crap, but the buzzing noise you hear in the background is not I'm being attacked by a giant herd of mutant um, dragonflies. So, just thought I'd put that out the, in there. Now, if you know me, you know, you're going to think you know where I'm going with this one on camouflage. Um, but you're probably going to be wrong. <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not going to go through the different types of camouflage. Uh, I'm not doing that. What I'm talking about is, what is camouflage? Now, a lot of people think, oh, it's a pattern. It's a pattern on clothing that's designed to help you blend in, you know, with the background. Blah. Technically, you're, you're correct, you know, camouflage and stuff. But what are we trying to accomplish, right? What we're trying to accomplish is invisibility, right? I mean, that's only part of camouflage. Camouflage can also be, you know, inaudibility or, you know, sound. It could be being quiet. Um, yeah, again, if you, if you get into fabric and stuff like that, some can have a perfect camouflage, you know, but when you walk, it sounds like a trash bag <laughs> bouncing around in the woods, you know, an unnatural sound. Um, so it's just like when I was, when, when you're hunting, you know, when you're hunting from your perspective, you, you want to cover all the senses, you know, like smell, sight, sound, smell, you know, hearing, all that stuff. And for you, I mean, as a, as a hunter, let's say, unless you're a games person and been out there, for you, it's a, it's a fun time to be out in the woods, you get to play hunter, you know, and everything else. From the deer's perspective, he's thinking, ah, oh, shit, I had to be out and hunting season all these goobers out here with guns oh my god well i've got to be a deer i gotta eat so gotta go eat some corn and rut and do all that other stuff so i was take my chances so already we got different perspective you know this guy right here it's his living i mean you know the reason for his existence is because uh he looks for um, he looks for motion, you know, something out of place. He it looks for something that sound that sounds out of place, a gun stock hitting a, you know, metal against wood and stuff. Normally you don't hear that, you know, in the woods with trees and stuff, you know, metal is kind of like, uh, what the fuck? And deer don't sit there and analyze like human. Bing! These white-tailed deer, man, that's all you see is a white tail. Bing, 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 bing. He didn't stick around to find out what it was that scared the shit of him. He's gone, you know. Unless you're good at shooting on a run and stuff, you know. Bye-bye deer. You know, you saw a deer. <laughs> you didn't kill a deer. So, what is invisibility? Now, if someone would go up there... All right, here's, here's a good one. Here's here's one that you're not thinking of. It's not, it's not going on about deer hunting either, you know. Let's say that um, homeless camp, right? What's the best camouflage for homeless camp? Now, some people might say, urban tactical, you know, urban, urban tack. Can't beat it. It's the shiznick. <laughs> I can't even spell urban. U-R-B-A-N, idiot. Urban tack, right? Wrong. You know, you know what the best camouflage is for a homeless camp? Homeless gear. Homeless clothing, homeless smell, homeless look, homeless sound, homeless acting. If you get all that right, guess what you are? You're invisible. And it's not because you are physically invisible. It's because they look at you and they see something. And it doesn't stand out as out of place. Right? Right? 
you look like another homeless person. If, if you've got the homeless walk and talk and act and everything, then you will probably be accepted under, you know, regular non-intrusive scrutiny or whatever. Eventually you'll be found out if you're not really homeless and stuff. Something will give you away. It won't be, you know, like the suit and tie that you're wearing. <clears throat> See, that would not be camouflage. That would be the opposite of camouflage in a homeless camp. Suit and tie, well-dressed, all your teeth, you smell all right, you've had a shower recently, you look well-fed, no open sores. You know, I mean, uh, these things in any other place would make you stand out. You would not be invisible in Mr. Society's society, you know? Walk in a bank like that and you probably get shown quickly the way out, you know, with surgical gloves or gunfire. But that's that's what I'm talking about. It's it's the art of blending in. That's why a, a geely suit, you know, a lot of stuff comes in handy because now you don't even have the human profile there. You're just a lump of moss or something, you know. I mean, unless you move. People walk right past it, be within inches of it, you know. If there's no smell emanating, and you don't step on their hand, and they go, ah, shit, you ain't even gonna know they're there. I mean, I know that one for a fact. Um, but, anyway, that that's all I'm saying about camouflage. It's the art of blending in. Don't get all caught up, and I need this type of gear, or I need this type of pattern. You need to fit the environment that you're trying to blend in with, you know? Perfectly good woodland camouflage gear is going to stand out like a sore thumb in a desert, you know? I mean, it's just common sense, but a lot of people don't think about that. Because what are you trying to... That's what got me when we people were deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, they had some, you know, good gear and everything, and then they would put, like, woodland camo fla uh, flak vests and stuff on, or outer web gear. So I was like, what? Look at these bushes moving around. And in reality, in the military, camouflage doesn't have a whole lot anymore with detection. You know, we've got satellites and infrared and all this other stuff. I'm just talking about, like, low-tech, basic-type stuff. Because, you know, your homeless camps are not being equipped with night vision and all this other shit, you know, or super high intelligence. They do have a rudimentary. Any of these places have their own kind of security, you know. It can be something as simple as a dog, you know, the dog that doesn't recognize somebody around there. You can fool people. But a lot of times you can't fool animals. Animals are like, hey, shit's, you know. And again, if if you make it seem like something it's not, you know, like if the dog's barking and then he goes out and the guy, whoever's playing guard or whatever, looks around and there goes off a cat running away, just happened to be timed perfectly. The person probably, you know, unless some super security is going to think the dog was barking at the cat. You know, he's going to make an assumption and boom. You know, you got away with it that time if you're sneaking in or sneaking out. But, I'm just saying, you know, with camouflage, it's what are you trying to achieve? Not what, what's a pattern and what are you trying to achieve? And you've got to cover all of these things. It can't be just, you know... Like I said, you've got the best camouflage in the world. Fits the background. You've got the scent checker on and everything. And then you make a motion when this animal is prey. It's not a predator. It's designed to, you know, watch out for shit. And it sees that motion and it's like that. It processes it like that. The way you would touch, the way you would touch your hand on a hot plate and you don't know it's hot. The way you pull it out. That's how fast an animal will react. And if that was you moving your gun, you're like, oh, there's a deer. I'm going to get a better shot at him. It's gone, man. Unless you got lightning reflexes and know how to lead a moving, bouncing target. It's history. You might as well not even shoot, you know. <laughs> you scared it off. Why, you know? Because you gave up your camouflage. You were no longer invisible. You were visible. You were no longer uh, non-auditory, stealthy, you made sound, uh, if you let out a, a fart, you did two things, man, <laughs> you let out a sound and a smell, both of which will carry if, if the wind's going right, and that's just for deer, and you may think, well, what's this got to do with me, or whatever, well, it's the same thing, you know, if, like, 
if a situation got to where food was short and everything, you might think, well, you know, I'm covered. I've got I've got everything covered, you know, I've got food, i got this, I don't have enough to feed everybody in the whole neighborhood, but i got enough to cover my family. And then you go about your thing while other people are starving, and they smell tacos. <laughs> they love tacos. You know, what gave you away? Smell. You should have eaten the stuff that's pre-cooked already and didn't make any smell. And you add your own scent to it. And you can still have your tacos. You're just going to have to eat your tacos cold or maybe warm. But that nice simmering over the fire smell. It's just like rainwater. When, if, when you live in a desert and the humidity is perpetually low. As soon as like a brief rainstorm comes by. It don't even have to touch the ground man. It can evaporate before it hits the ground. You smell water from a long way away. Even if you're not thirsty. Your senses are heightened on smell. And it would be the same way with people who are hungry. They're going to do the same thing man. They're going to smell tacos and they're going to be hungry. And then you got to confront the issue of. Have you taken into account. Other people knowing that you have food and you don't have enough food to share with them because, hey man, you tried to get them to prepare but they were too busy buying crack cocaine or the latest video game. Couldn't listen to you, thought you were a nutcase. Well, you know, that's where, that's where things start getting, if you ain't planned on that, you know, you can make little, little food bags, you know, like a thing of rice or whatever and stuff like that. And don't give it to them. I mean, it's going to come down to barter. You're going to have to say, hey, man, I'll trade this for you. This does two things for you. It keeps them from coming back all the time saying, hey, I need some more tacos. Yo, dude, man, I gave you a bag. right? Yeah, but we ate all that. Well, what do you got to trade? What do you got, you know? A lot of people say that sounds cruel, and that's that that keeps them from coming back all the time unless they got something in their hand. And this is no guarantee because once you open the door and admit you've got food or you've given yourself away, then you know. I mean, if it's a short-term thing and everything like that, you're probably better off sharing with them and just being neighborly, you know. But just think about what it did to you. Now you were prepared for like three weeks of no food, water, or electricity. And now your family is down, your family, the ones that you prepared for and worked for. You didn't have help from your neighbor over here. Your neighbor was busy being a nuisance. You remember the the ant and the grasshopper fable? You know, where they, the ant's busy and the grasshopper's having a good time. And he, the ant's putting away grain and all this other stuff. And the grasshopper's saying, come on, man, party, have a time. Nah, man, I got I got work to do. I got to do this. Guess what happened? The grasshopper starves to death in that one, you know? Um, maybe now in the new one for kids and stuff. Uh, he gets a social program, handout from the government or whatever, and life is good, and the ant is shot for being a capitalist pig or something. I don't know. You, know. you can turn all this around, but in reality, the prepared people are usually the ones that if they have to, know how to be invisible when you have to, you know. <laughs> know what invisible means and uh, practice it every once in a while because it, it comes in handy for not just hunting. It comes in handy when you don't want to stand out in a crowd. It, where if you stand out in a crowd, you will be picked out just like a pack of wolves or whatever. If something's alone... And the rest of them think that they're all the wolves. They will go after that thing. And you may think, ah, it's not fair. Seven of wolves against one poor little dog out there. Yeah, guess what? Your food to these wolves. They ain't worried about you hurting them a little bit. You might bite one if you're a best pit bull or whatever. But they work together as a team. They know how to circle and attack and everything. If you ain't ready for that, you're SOL. So what do you do if, if you're not a, a wolf, you know? You're a dog. You act like a wolf, you know? <sighs> and if you're on your own, that's why they call it lone wolf, you know? You gotta be pretty damn tough if you're a lone wolf, you know? You gotta be pretty tough. You gotta be able to handle that. And if you can't, sorry, man, the odds are against you. So the best way is not to be lone wolf. That, 
You know, you may think, ah, he, he said I need to be Chuck Norris. No, no. <laughs> what you need to do is learn how to be invisible. Learn how to not stand out. If you put on wolf's clothing, you know, it's like sheep with sheep's clothing. If you put on wolf's clothing, you got to act like a wolf and kind of be like a wolf. Um, and you won't stand out as much amongst wolves. But, again, it's situation. It depends on situation. We can get into situational awareness and how much more important that is later on, you know, talk about urban tactics if we ever get to there. But anyway, yeah, just another crazy rant for me that um, had nothing to do with knives again, did it? You know, well, I guess in the end, you take out your stealthy knife and you dispatch something quietly rather than using a pistol that draws a lot of attention. There, there, we include a knife. You happy? Here, we'll use a special weird knife there. We use that. Alright. It even has a instead of a blood groove, it has a blood hole so there. I know some of these a lot of I just want to throw this in the end here. A lot of these videos, you know, some are gonna be short, some are gonna be long, some are gonna be weird, some are not gonna have content, you know, like related. They're just gonna be funny. Some of them like any comedy, you're not gonna get the joke. It's not gonna be funny to you. That's okay. Some people are going to, already, they just thumbs down stuff and think that that's going to bother me. It doesn't. It, you know, I don't let analytics get to me. If you want to put a thumbs down on something, fine. If you want to leave a comment, that's fine. I'm not going to reanalyze my life every time. What did I do wrong? Was it the light? I don't, you know, hey, fine. You know, thank you, really. I, I mean this without, you know, a ton of sarcasm. Thank you for your input, you know, because... The way YouTube uh, looks at it, it doesn't matter whether it's a um, positive or a negative. It's it's feedback, and that's the way I look at it too. All right, so so you didn't like it, you didn't have to watch it. You know, I didn't hold a knife to your head, so you got to watch this. You know, and it's not going to be for everybody. I'm not. Jeez, I'm not trying to. When I do something, it, it, it's either entertainment or educational. Or a combination of both, or just random off the wall. Sometimes I've done videos, especially about this topic. I still have not figured out a way to do this video without deleting it. I have not put it up. I've done four different attempts to do it, and every time I try to do the video, it sounds crazy. And you know me, I've opened up on a lot of stuff. You already already know that I'm crazy, but I don't want people to get turned off on this so much that they're like, man. Because he feels that way, that's it. I'm just not going to listen to him anymore. Because I'm not, I'm not hungry for subscribers and everything, but the ones that I communicate with, I feel like we have like a connection. So if I lose the people that I've been communicating with just because they didn't get my sense of humor, you're like, I, I'm not going to subscribe. He said something about old people, goddammit. That's what I think of him, I'm unsubscribing. Then that, you know, would mean more than some random bot that was just in there, you know, for a giveaway and ran away because they didn't win. You know, I mean, that, that means so much less to me than somebody else. But even then, if that happens, I'm not going to let that end my life, you know. I was like, oh, well, shutting down the channel, that's it. <gasps> I lost Joe Smo from Wakamo and because I made fun of his accent. Well, I guess I won't make accents anymore. No, I'm nuts, you know, I put it on the air for, I'm not going to be around forever, you know, and I might get out of knives and stuff and do something else, and you're like, man, you remember when William's knife type, he was actually this guy back there that made videos about knives and dinosaurs? I don't believe it, now he's famous, or is it infamous? <laughs> Either way, you know. You never know. I'm not trying to go for fame, like I said, or numbers or anything else. All right, yeah, sorry. This one has gone way too long. I'm going to have to speed it up. Maybe if I speed the sound up at the very last, it'll shorten it down. We'll just have another low video quality video. Thank you very much for putting up with my ramblings. I hope you got something out of this. If you didn't, at least you know something. You've, you've learned something. I'm... I'm not going to approach things normally from the way you would normally think about it. Even if you thought you knew me, I might have a different approach. I'm not trying to do this on purpose. I'm just trying to um, 
come at it from a different angle sometimes, you know. Break it down. Figure out what it is. There you go. 20 minutes of rambling. Jeez. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.